Thank you. Uh, in order to speed this up and give Kimberly a little bit of time, I'm going to not talk about the history of the house, but we are open if you didn't have a chance to go there. Uh, we are open tomorrow from 11 to 3 if you're an out-of-town person, and we also have a lot of information on our website. Um, so the house is, uh, was Richard Neutra's primary residence from 1932 until his death. And uh, one of the things that's also significant, aside from it being his own house, is the fact that it was built in three phases. Uh, and so therefore it represents three distinct periods of Neutra's career. So early, very early Neutra, mid Neutra with the garden house uh, from 1939 and then VDL2, which you see here, which is from 1965. Uh, so here's Richard Neutra, who came, studied in Vienna, came to the US, uh, lived with Schindler at the King's Roadhouse. So there's a nice connections between the history of our two houses. Um, here he was, he lived there. Uh, Kimberly will t speak about this project. Um, and then this is the house that made him very famous, 1929 Lovell Health House. Uh, kit of parts construction, first steel house in the United States. Um, the VDL house, if you don't know, is named after C.H. Vanderleo, uh, who was one of the co-owners of the Vanelli factory in Rotterdam and who gave him the original seed money to build the house. Uh, the first house from 1932 is really an international style uh, modernist house, uh, very influenced by Dutch modernism. And then uh, this later house, uh, after the first house burnt down in 63, Richard Neutra, shown here, and his son Dion rebuilt the house, uh, which was completed in 65. This is the house that's open for the public. Here we see the model showing there's also a back garden house, which is where I live with my husband. Um, the, the video complex played a central role in the practice and cultural life of Los Angeles. Hundreds of projects were designed in VDL's modest first floor office space. Talented architects such as Gregory Ayn and Harwell Hamilton Harris and Soriano began their careers here, and well-known cultural figures like Frank Lloyd Wright, Laszlo Moholy Naji, and Charles and Ray Eames, since Lucia's here, uh, were entertained in the family living quarters. Neutra's post-war work, including video two, was less beholden to the international style. The tightly contained boxes made up of stucco walls gave way to buildings with large expanses of glass and planar elements that thrust outward into the landscape. So now that I've given you a little bit of a very accelerated background of the house, I would like to turn to one of the ways that we use the house today, which is as a venue for art installations. The installations we have done at VDL include one day performance pieces and installations that are up from a few weeks to a few months. In the last few years, that I have been involved in working with artists doing installations at VDL, I begin to see many more projects like these happenings at import, happening at important houses around the world. Of course, the Mac Center has been doing this for a very long time under Kimberly's incredible leadership. But these installations are also happening at the Glass House, the Villa Savoie, the Barcelona Pavilion, and the Gamble House. The House Museum, as you all know, given the nature of this conference, has become a prevalent method of preserving important architectural landmarks. These house museums pose a difficult curatorial dilemma. How to maintain the cultural relevance and public engagement of domestic spaces that have been stripped of their former activities. A house that is no longer used for living I believe must be occupied by something else, otherwise it will lose its vitality. The house can become a venue for telling stories about the past or a vehicle for other types of activities such as lectures, classes, exhibits, and performances. At VDL, we faced, faced with the challenge of activating this historic home, we have invited artists to generate new meanings and interpretations of the house. These collaborations 
with artists point to alternative preservation strategies which move away from the conservation of historic homes as static objects and instead affirm the importance of human occupation and transformation. The artists we have invited to engage with the house have created works that reinforce or counter formal aspects of the building or that bring back the life of the building's creators or previous inhabitants. The French artist Xavier Veillan's installation Architectones was a reflection of the architect and his family, as well as the period in Los Angeles when Neutra was most active. I see these activities not only as helping the institution, but also about helping to foment contemporary discourse. These houses contribute to a larger debate about art and culture and create a dialogue with the architecture. That is critically important to us, given that this is primarily an educational institution that is run by an architecture school. The performance piece by Jenny Hart was a workshop that had people embroidering plans of the house. The installation by Bryony Roberts, uh, Inverting Neutra, was based on the module of the house, filling all the negative spaces with, the, with grids of blue strings. Of course, there's a downside to doing these installations in that they often get in the way of the architecture, creating a stumbling block for tourists that are on architectural pilgrimages. The installations get in the way of their pre-image of the house, the house that they have seen in postcards and in architectural monographs. There is also a counter-argument that says at least in the case of the Schindler House and the VDL House, the original inhabitants themselves used the house as a venue for cultural exchange. Both these houses had hundreds of parties and events and lectures and concerts and all kinds of cultural activities when the architects lived in them. Here, teams of Cal Poly Pomona students were given areas of the set house to intervene in as a test for pavilion designs they were working on in their studio. The other argument for doing these types of installation is that these houses make it possible for artists or architects interested in installation work to work in a domestic setting away from the white cubes gallery. Many of the artists that we've had at VDL are attracted to the idea of working in an incongruous space with a specific history. One of the stipulations that we have at VDL is that the art must be inextricably linked to the house, meaning that the art responds to the architecture, to the history of the house, or to the domestic nature of the environment. The first piece I showed by the Mexican architect and artist Santiago Borja was literally woven into the trellis of the house. When the exhibit ended, I wasn't sure what to do with the piece. I called him to ask, and he said, cut it down, which is what I did with a pair of scissors. For the project we see here, Competing Utopias, we removed all of the furniture and artifacts from VDL and replaced them with similar artifacts from East Germany during the cold period, sourced from the Vende collection. No labels or explanations were provided, so the two post-war worlds collapsed into ambiguous simultaneity. The fictional nature of the House Museum with its period rooms made this exhibit resonate for me. The exhibition replaced the standard fiction of the House Museum with a new fiction that could have never have happened, but that fit perfectly in with the house. In some ways, this project could be seen as the most controversial installation we have done because it was a direct critique of the House Museum. But it resonated with the public because the house felt occupied as if the inhabitants had just walked out of the room. The landscape architect Luis Callejas recently exhibited here. Luis <clears throat> wanted to wrap the, the penthouse a VDL with fabric as a big gesture. 
I was worried that, about this because what would keep it from flying off the roof and landing on a car driving by? I suggested him, to him that he hang the fabric as curtains on the existing curtain rods. That would also relate the piece to the domestic environment that it was being situated within. And they worked as curtains do, blowing in the wind. Last year, Stephen Lichty and Neil Marcus created a performance art piece called Case Study for VDL. Lichty and Marcus have both direct experienced dystonia, a neurological disposition that causes involuntary movements, muscle contractions, and re repetitive motions. The artist harnessed this dystonic noise, redirecting intensities to different parts of their bodies, minds, and the house itself. In conclusion, I would like to say that we don't typically describe VDL as a house museum, but instead we say that it is an educational facility. In that context, these exhibits make more sense. These exhibits are helpful in that they provide new ways of understanding architecture or under understanding an atmospheric condition or understanding history, and that for us is enough of a reason to do them. Last summer, the architect Bryony Roberts and I put together a symposium called Intervention, Contemporary Artists in the Modern House. The two-day conference looked at the power of an experimental art installations to remake the spatial and social realities of modernist house museums. Kimberly Meyer and Ted Bosley both participated. It covered many of the issues I discussed here today. Uh, we've actually published a limited number of books of these conversations, which may be of interest to some of you. I would also like to give thanks to Natasha Drave for inviting me to this conference. And I'm done. That was fast. <laughs> I think that was a pretty impressive um, condensation of a lot of information, um, and you made up time, so awesome. So we actually are gonna have time for just a couple quick questions. So is, does anybody have a question out there in the field? No, I had one quick question, which is when you do these art installations, do you run into issues with the impact on the house? Like how do you prevent the, you know, people are hanging things and attaching things, what, you know, does that freak you out when that happens? What, what do you do? Actually, we have a policy that they don't uh, drill holes or make sort of modifications to the house itself. That piece by Bryony Roberts, uh, which was all over the house, they actually used clamps and used the house uh, to kind of attach this armature to. And I think they drilled one hole in the entire house. It was like a small hole that we patched. But it, they've mostly been pretty sensitive. The Santiago Borja piece was woven in. There was no, uh, so we sort of play a role where they, they don't, right, make sure that they don't damage the house. But like in the, in the Luis Callejas uh, piece, that was actually, I thought, was helpful. Not only was the house, was the exhibit by using the curtains mm -hmm. less impactful on the, on the, house itself, it also actually worked much better to reinforce it as a domestic setting. Mm -hmm. Another question? How do you make the decision to uh, totally change the art piece for visual art and what's that process like for you? Can you both repeat the question? Can you tell us your name? So the question was, how do we decide what to do? Honestly, we don't decide. These are all people who come to us. So it's more a question of, we don't, it's a fairly informal house in that there isn't a large board or sort of, it's basically they come to, people come with ideas or we kind of reach out to people that are doing interesting work. Um, and we don't do them as frequently as let's say the Mac Center, which has a very active art program. But we determine it by, does it seem to, 
be interesting? Does it further the conversation about architecture and the arts? Uh, is it fully integrated into the house? Have they, is it really telling some, some you know, helping people see the, the, the space or the, the, the gardens or the history of, of the architecture in a new way? We're doing this because we're recording it, so we want to make sure that we capture that. Sophia Ungers from the Ungers Archive in Cologne. Um, I think it's very exciting to involve art in the buildings, but it's also a matter of cost. So how do you finance these exhibitions first? And secondly, do you feel like you have more visitors when you have an exhibition? Do you draw a different public? Um, yeah, two parts to that question. So the financing is entirely the responsibility of the artist. We provide no funds. So. Um, we have found, and in fact, with some of those, including the Xavier Vellan, he actually donated $30,000 to the house, which allowed us to paint it. So that was a unique, that was a unique case, because he's a very sort of well-known and fairly uh, established artist. But mostly they come with their own grants. So the Humex, the Graham Foundation, has subsidized many of these, and they don't tend to be terribly expensive. Um, in terms of uh, the second question, sorry, what was the second question? No, I've forgotten. Uh, do we get more visitors? We get different visitors. I would say that you, we don't do these to, you know, the argument is always, oh, this is a way to get more money and bring in new people. Honestly, these don't generate more funds, but they do generate a lot of interest in the house and, um, and also we see it as really this as a venue for young architects and artists to, to try things out and to experiment and to sort of further that conversation. So it's not so much about bringing in new audiences, it's about providing our colleagues, so other architects, other artists, with a venue to do their work. Okay, <clears throat> so thank you very much. Sure.